Happy Friday, everyone. Chapter 13. My door flew open. I toppled out. Shivering, my whole body shaking from the cold, I landed on my side in the driveway and stared up at Marissa. Marissa pulled open the back door and Todd and Steve burst out. Hugging themselves, they began hopping up and down, trying to warm up. A second later, Alan stood out through the open driver's door and joined them. I climbed to my feet, forcing myself to stop shivering. The night air felt balmy and warm compared to the inside of the car. What's going on? Marissa asked, turning from me to the others. What is wrong with you guys? F freezing, Steve choked out. I'm going in, Todd announced. Got to get warm. He took off and a run and vanished into the house. Marissa eyed me. Mitchell, were you locked in again? Yeah, we were locked in, Steve growled, answering for me, and the dumb cluck had the air conditioner on. I did not, I cried. Funny joke, Mitchell, Alan muttered. Real funny. Steve gave me a shove. You got a weird sense of humor. Come on, guys, I pleaded. You've got to believe me. I didn't. But they took off, running along the street toward their houses. I watched them until they disappeared into the next block. Then I turned back to Marissa. Lucky you came along again, I said. Yeah, I guess so, she replied, still studying me. You really should get those doors fixed. I thought my dad had fit, had fit, <coughs> excuse me. I thought my dad had been fixed at the garage, I told her. As I talked to Marissa, I was thinking about the laughter I heard inside the car. The girl's soft, cruel laughter. Laughter as cold as the air in the car. I'm afraid to tell Dad about the doors, I said. He might try to fix them himself. I shook my head. If he does, he'll only make them worse. But you can't leave them like this, she insisted, her eyes locked on mine. It's dangerous, Mitchell. It's really dangerous. It was nearly midnight, but I couldn't get to sleep. Mom and Dad had gone to bed at 11. The house was quiet and still. Gusts of wind rattled the old window panes in my bedroom window. In my pajamas, I leaned on the windowsill and gazed down at the car at the bottom of the driveway. It suddenly looked to me like a leopard about to pounce. I felt a hand on my shoulder. I screamed and spun around. Todd, what are you doing here? Why are you still up? I demanded. He didn't reply. In the light from the street, I could see his face, tight with fear. He stepped beside me and gazed down at the car. It's haunted, Todd whispered. What? The car is haunted, he said. Add a bonus. Chapter 14. I groaned. Todd, please don't start with that ghost stuff again. It's haunted, he repeated, leaning on the windowsill and staring down at the car. His entire body shuddered. He turned to me. I heard that girl laughing, Mitchell. My mouth dropped open. You heard it too? He nodded. It might have been Marissa from outside the car, I said softly. Maybe, he replied, but somebody locked those doors. Somebody locked us in and then made it cold. Todd, it was a ghost, he declared, his voice trembling with his pace so pale in the gray light from outside. I know it was a ghost. The car is haunted, Mitchell. He was trembling. I put my hands gently on his shoulders. That's crazy, Todd, I whispered. You've got to stop imagining ghosts all the time. But... But, he sputtered. The car needs work, that's all, I assured him. It's a used car, just needs a little work. We talked a while longer. I think I calmed him down. He said goodnight and padded back to his room. I started to bed. Stopped halfway across the floor. Something pulled me back to the window. I had to see the car one more time. Heavy black clouds floated all over the hill. The moon and stars were covered behind a blanket of darkness. I peered down to the driveway and gasped in surprise. The car was bathed in an eerie green glow. The pale green light circled the car, shimmered around it, growing brighter, brighter then fading, then brighter again, pulsing. What is doing that? I wondered. I stared down through the window, my forehead pressing against the cold pane. It's taut, right? Is the car really haunted? I turned from the window and grabbed my clothes. I had to find out.